Welcome, friends. Um, it has been just a couple of weeks here since Christy and I have been on live, and we're coming back with a huge podcast today. Um, we're really excited for episode number 28. It's going to be everybody's favorite uh, because we have Nick Baldwin and we have Tristan Ahumada on here, and we're really excited. They're from the Lab Code Agents group, and I mean, they're also involved in many other groups, many other businesses. They both have had real estate teams. Um, just, you know, serial entrepreneurs. And so we're going to talk through leadership with them and we're really excited to get into that. Um, but first I'm Lindsay Soprani. I'm the CEO of Soprani Consulting. We're the top recruiting and consulting firm in the country for all things real estate. And I'm here with my lovely co-host, Christy Bell Grossman, who is the CEO of Ops Boss Coaching, the ultimate resource for training and coaching for real estate ops bosses. Welcome to the leader equation. So... <laughs> Here's the deal. You guys have been doing this for five years, right? And so I want you guys to give us just a brief little background on, on both of you. Um, and then Christy will kind of lead us into the rest of it. But quick, you know, background, Tristan, why don't you start and just let us know how did you guys, you know, what have you been yeah. doing the last couple of years? I we'll, guess we'll get into it. So I created the group in 2014 because I was speaking around the nation for realtor.com. Same question kept on popping up. So my wife said, create a group. So I did. And I listened to her. Uh, wise, then, man. Uh, wise man, right? And then a few months later, I was introduced to Nick Baldwin uh, and then brought him into the community. And then we started growing it rapidly. From there, we got many opportunities to do lots of other things and, uh, and just get involved into lots of tech with companies and outside of real estate and now we both do our separate things as and at the same time we both run lab code agents i still have a team here in ventura county los angeles county a real estate team and now i consult fortune 500 companies and i run lab code agents as a ceo awesome and nick. nick hey thanks for having us um <clears throat> i'm nick baldwin uh yeah tristan originally started lca um it, it, when he started LCA, there was like a, there was a void, like there was just void in the industry. You guys remember the tech savvy agent blog, like way back in the day, C pass and Ellie, Chris Smith. Yeah. And then when those guys left realtor.com, you know, that website, they didn't continue it. And so there's just, that was like the go-to place for agents to learn about technology. And so uh, Tristan saw that void and started this group and who would have known that it would blow up into something that it is today. But um, it, it did. And, and Steve Passanelli, who was Steve Passanelli, who was a mutual friend, introduced us and said, you guys should know each other. And Tristan being the type of guy he is without even knowing me, he's like, Hey, come on in and join the group and be a moderator with me. So it was just basically us sharing best practices for a while. Uh, cause groups were kind of a new thing at that point. Um, and then like Tristan said, as the group started to grow, we started to get opportunities. We had tech companies coming to us asking if they can put their their tech in front of our members. Um, so the group grew and we had to catch up to it in terms of a business. Um, but a lot of great things came from that. So I have run teams. I don't currently run a team now, but um, I've been in real estate for 14 years. Um, I ran a team with my mother. I had uh, then my own team. And then I was offered a team leader job for Keller Williams in Clarkston, Michigan, which was my wife's hometown. So I we moved to Clarkston, took on a team leader position. Then I had a team in Michigan and New Jersey. Um, and then after about a year and a half, I stepped down from that and became regional technology director for Michigan, Northern Ohio. Um, so that's what I'm doing now and doing LCA. So that's my story. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. For those of you who are live with us today um, on the Leader Equation, if you haven't been with us before, um, Lindsay and I are passionate about leadership and we decided one day last year that we needed to learn more and what would be the best way would be to get great leaders to talk to. So we're having you join us. We have owners, founders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and usually they're shotgun leaders inside and outside real estate. We talk about what adds to the leadership formula, what subtracts, what divides, and most importantly, what multiplies your results. So today we've got two partners versus the entrepreneur and the shotgun leader. And I'm actually really excited about today because you guys have leadership in a little bit of a different format. You have our traditional conversation of entrepreneurial leadership, but you're also lead, leading what I believe, I'm not sure I didn't do my research, but I believe you're the number one um, largest real estate Facebook group um, that exists. 
by a lot. 100%. Uh, so you're not only leading businesses, leading a Facebook group of over 121,000 people. Like in today's times, especially, we were just talking before the show. That's incredible. So um, now that we know who you are, I'm going to throw it back to Lindsay and we're going to dive into some good conversation. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, here's the deal. I, what I would love about Lab Coats is that it is, it has really been my go-to. I know Christie's as well and so many others go to, to learn and to get better and just to grow. And so when you guys came together, did you even, I mean, did you have an inkling that you were onto something? Because this thing caught like wildfire. Well, yeah, initially when, when I first created this, this group, what it was, I closed the door to, to Jake, Jake Fry is my uh, lead coordinator at the time. I said, dude, we're going to get to a hundred thousand. I closed the door and he's like, yeah, we'll be lucky if we get to 10 K. So right after that, I, I didn't understand the dynamics of what I was doing at the time. And so bringing in somebody as talented as Nick, uh, once we brought that piece in together, we then realized what we had as companies were approaching us and saying, hey, have you guys thought about doing this or this or this? And then that started really opening up our minds as to like, oh, there, there's, it's more than just a free community. I, I never really thought more than that. So yes, so that's a lot. There's a lot of parts that are moving now, which is beautiful. Awesome. At what point did it go from, as we say at KW, from E to P? At what point were you kind of entrepreneurial about it? And when did you go purposeful? And what did that mean for your communication and your leadership together? Nick? Well, <clears throat> I mean, clearly it was when Tristan realized how talented I was and brought me in. Um, but <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you know what's interesting? Like, the group was growing faster than we could keep up. And so like, like I mentioned earlier, like building a business model from it at the beginning was kind of all over the place. It's like, okay, where's this going? What should we do? What should we get into? You know, should we, you know, build a class? Should we get sponsorships? Should we test products? What should we do this, that, and the other. But I think like really kind of the, the, the launching off point was when, the then CEO of Commission Zinc uh, came to us around, we were on five or 7,000 members and he's like, hey guys, you know, I like what you're doing. I like where you're going. Cause at the, at the time, like really nobody was doing that type of, like, why are these guys sharing best practices for free? Like, I don't get this, right? Everyone had a, always thought there's gotta be an agenda. At some point they're gonna say, oh, we're gonna have to buy a coaching course now. But he goes, I love what you guys are doing. I'd love to like host you at our headquarters and, and, and have you guys do a summit. And so we did a two day summit. We had about 150 people show up, which was amazing for our first time as in doing a live event. And that was kind of the point where like, we jumped off from there. Like we were getting, we were like, you know what? Like, okay, conferences, let's, let's get into the conference space. Like clearly, you know, this is something that people love and this is something that they need. And so that was the point where people started to take notice, right? We had a great turnout for our first two day event. People flew in, we had top, we had like the Lokins, we had huge names in our industry there. And they were like, who are these guys getting the Lokins, right? And so that kind of is what started everything, that first conference. Tristan, would you say that like that was kind of like where it took off? Yeah, that's really where, where we took it to another level. Uh, we didn't realize how much influence we had that was part one of not realizing there was a part two, which we'll get into, but that was part one of not realizing how much influence we had. For sure. Um, and then we just, you know, when people were asking questions in the group about obviously what CRM should I use her, <laughs> um, things like that, you know, what's the best tech for this? Where should I go for this? And then people started naming specific products and services and tech. And then uh, we realized that this could be a, a way to go. Like this could be a, a path, right? Like, cause then we started getting tech CEOs reaching out to us like, Hey guys, like, I don't want to violate the group rules and spam, but people are asking about my company. What can we do to get your, to get my company out in front of your members? And so what people have to realize is just because someone approaches us and says, 
we'd like to sponsor you. Here's my company. The thing that keeps us honest is we always have to test it out first and put it through the ringer. And if it doesn't work for us, we're not going to stand behind it. So like when we had our, uh, when we had our third really big event in Miami, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, not Miami in Coronado, uh, San Diego, all 25 sponsors were people that, uh, they became household names to these people. Like uh, the members that were walking through the vendor hall knew who every single sponsor was because we had tested it and told them it was great. Um, if we don't think something is great, we're not going to stand behind it. So that's the difference. We don't just take money to take money. It has to work. And so that's, I think, where we stand apart from a lot of other groups and a lot of other uh, events. What bumps in the road did you guys hit as your group started massively growing in that first growth stage? Well, I want to say one thing real quick. Our group is broker neutral. We're Keller Williams agents, but everybody is allowed in. Yes. So like one of the first bumps in the road was like, you know, people didn't understand what we were doing, right? Yeah. And I just remember at first people going, you know, this is a Keller Williams, this is all KW. You say it's broker neutral, but you know, you're saying this, that, and the other. And then we had people coming in trying to discredit us, trying to um, you know, uh, say nasty things within the group. Um, because I, and it was a lot of times it was coaches who had platforms that agents were paying for, but we were posting this stuff and sharing. And so that was something that people weren't used to, right? Tristan, like, remember in the beginning, like how people didn't understand why we were doing that. And they were like, you guys have an agenda. You guys have an agenda, you know? I remember that. <laughs> still, look, it's still it's still something that's brought up every once yeah. in a while. People email us, they text us, what's your agenda? What what are you guys doing? So they just don't understand the model that we've created, which is okay. You know, we keep going. Yeah. It's like Zillow's gonna be a brokerage. See, unlike Zillow, like we don't have an agenda. But anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a whole nother show. <laughs> <That is. laughs> if we were a KW group only, I could do that overnight. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. anyway. Well, and the, it's what's interesting about a lot of that. Um, what I loved is that you guys continue to be in real estate too, right? Throughout a lot of that. Now you've gone into leadership positions, Nick, um, and done some different things, but you know, the testing of everything, it was in within your businesses, right? And so that was so awesome to watch because then we, we did know, like you weren't going to, you know, say, Hey, Lion Desk works. It's great. Look at all these features that I have, unless you were actually utilizing it. Right. For sure. Yeah. Like yeah. we, like we, um, you know, people think that we use every system under the sun, which we really don't like, we'll, if we're testing on a product, we'll test it for two or three months just to kind of get a sense of how it works. And then we'll post our results, but we do have our systems that we use, you know, it's only a handful of them, you know, yeah. we each use a certain CRM. We each just use, use a different kind of automation or ISA, but like, you know, we test things out, we run a few leads through them and we see how it works and we post the results. And so um, it's not like we're using 10 different CRMs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That would be a lot. I don't understand that this is a, the agents see it as a group, which is great. We want them to see it as a group, but they don't see the business side of it. They're like, wait, I thought you were using, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm just testing this out and showing you how it works. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Well, did you guys ever think about, um, you know, potentially, well, I don't know why I want to say it. Did you ever think about not doing real estate anymore and just doing the community? Like, was that something you considered or was it, no, I always want to be in real estate because I want to keep learning? No, we considered it a lot of times <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's just natural to look at yeah. one avenue that, that's bringing in revenue and opportunities versus this. But what keeps me inside of the real estate world is, is really being able to understand what's happening next so that I can then help the agents or brokerages and teams, right? Because I run a team, I own a brokerage, I, ha I have leadership positions, but at the same time, I'm understanding where the world is heading in the real estate world. And that's part of us helping, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that's how. Yeah, like how for long, me, 
Just for I me, I was a team leader. I stopped this last time I personally sold a house was 2017 because then I came, became a team leader, but I still had teams like two, right? And then I was actively working with agents. And um, so while I wasn't selling, that's really not my passion. My passion is systems and, and consulting. And as long as I'm doing that in some capacity, like Tristan doesn't really sell anymore, but he coaches his team and sets up the systems. So as long as we're still doing that and we're still in the dirt and we're still like understanding what the agents are going through and, and keeping up with the changing of the industry, then, you know, that's something that we're always going to do. Yeah. How long did it take you guys to get to a hundred thousand? What was the time period from zero to a hundred? Oh, I remember. Do you? No, I don't. How long yeah, we did had you? a time. Well, not, we had a goal for a hundred thousand members on the fourth uh, anniversary of the group, which was October, 2019. And we hit that like three or four months early. So almost five years. Cause we started October 2nd, 2014. This is five years in October, right? Coming October up. 2nd, 2014 is when we created it. Oh, so then, okay. Then it was you guys are like the husband and the wife talking about what day they got married yep. when their anniversary <laughs> Happy anniversary. Thanks. <laughs> Not today. I remember um, that we did hit 100,000 members in before our goal. I know that, but I don't remember so was, when. Okay, so then it was four years in like, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like an eight-year-old. It's four and three quarters. So regardless of what the date was, it was fast, right? Fast. So what I want to know is because that happens in our businesses, no matter what business you're in, whether it's real estate or something else, when you're successful, it goes faster than you think it's going to go. And along the way, a lot of stuff breaks. What broke along the way? <laughs> ah, got it. Well, wait, I want to say one thing about the growth. That was good. Good question. Okay. One thing about the growth, then we'll go back to that. People who, when lab code started to explode, we started to see other groups come out, come, come out. Right. Okay. And weren't growing like we were growing uh, because it was almost as if it was in response to what we were doing. It wasn't organic and people can tell when it's not organic. So unless you're actually doing it for a real reason, because you are passionate and not because it's in response to something else, they can tell. So it's not going to grow unless you're doing it for the right reasons. So I just wanted to say that that's why yeah. I think it's continued to grow and it's con continued. We're continuously adding, you know, 3000 people a month still, you know, so. Without any promo. Good. Yeah. Well, most of our men. Anyway, the question that you, sorry, Christy, I just wanted to go. That's into okay. That. That's okay. I was just thinking like that, that was, especially at that time, even now that if somebody starts a group now, that's still fast growth. But at the time your group was really novel and unique and, that acceleration often causes challenges and communication issues and leadership issues and systems issues. And so I'm just wondering if someone's listening and I'm an entrepreneur and I own a business that's just starting to take off, what, what kind of challenges should I expect? And what it kind caused of all of those like? issues? It caused <laughs> all of those issues. I, I think that the one thing that you consistently have to be aware of as a leader, if you can be is, you have to start getting comfortable with living in, in uncertainty. And yeah. so I know that COVID-19 had put this right in front of our face, right? But we can actively practice adapting to change quicker and quicker. The more we throw ourselves into opportunities that we have no really control over or feeling of comfort. I think the more we start doing that, the more we can gain control of what we can do. Because if we look back when we started this and it started on an upward tra trajectory, what happened was, I'm gonna talk about myself here, Nick, but then you can say if you feel the same way, but I was in a sense kind of naive to, to the people around us saying that they would help us and, and want, to, want to really partner with us to help us grow. And us being new to it, especially me, I'm like, yeah, that thought's cool, right? And then you take on a partnership without really realizing the true reasons that the other companies want to team up with you. And then they burn you. I mean, that was, that was super hurtful for us and a big learning curve for us. So I think who you partner with at the very beginning and really feeling comfortable with uncertainty can really help you go uh, to your destination quicker. Do you have 
like sort of like the three, I don't know, three words, three qualities of what you're looking for and people that you partner with in that, you know, important capacity? Yeah, I need to have, I need to have, I need to have them have great character. So like, regardless of what happens, yeah, you can cry and be sad and, you know, curl up until ball. It's normal to feel these feelings, but character, like what happens after you do all of that? Are you going to come back? Are you going to rebound, right? Are you just going to give up and cave and say, uh, you know what, this just wasn't for me. I'm sorry. Uh, I want people who are going to go through that fire with me, right? Because there's going to be a lot of that fire. And that's number one. Number two is a lot of people aren't really aware of, of how they function and live in life. Uh, there are a set principles that you have, but you don't really talk about them. And that's okay, right? Most people don't. And I think it's important for you as a person that's getting into business with the other person to look at what those principles are. Are those principles based on their actions and the way they live their life? Do those coincide with the way that you live your life as well? Right. And that's important. And then also how, uh, how emotionally intelligent and socially aware are they? Because that's, that's really important to me. I need to have a partner or be friends with people that have the capacity to understand what's happening around them, socially aware, and how they can cope with this through their emotional intelligence. Are they going to just blatantly destroy relationships or are they going to help create them, right? Those are the three things. Did you know all of those things about Nick before you all partnered or did you- I had no that idea. That knows that, he knows that I have emotional intelligence and I'm also very emotional. Oh, um, this is okay. about the anniversary date. <laughs> yes, I cry. <clears throat> no, but um, it's true. So, like, we recently had this conversation too. Like, you know, we're <clears throat> we're gonna launch, um, you know, a subscription model in the next several months. And uh, you know, when you when you start to when you start to connect yourselves with people who are gonna help do it do that, it's really even more important to make sure you're aligned with people who have not necessarily like look we all have our own beliefs it's not about that it's about making sure that we're aligned with the right people the right people that understand what lca is about understand how lca runs how lca is all about contribution like we don't judge anybody <clears throat> you know so um your principles right yeah exactly yeah. Like we, we compare it to like the marines the marines have a very specific you know st strict set of principles that they live by and so you know, now that we've uh, started to uh, become more uh, of, a, of, a, of a legitimate business, like we have, you know, we have people that work for us, with us, um, we have partners. Um, and so those people all have to have, uh, all have to kind of stand for the same thing. They want to, they have to be able to see the same mission and be in alignment. And if they're, if, if people are in alignment, um, you know, then it never works, right? Um and, you know, we've gone through lots of, you know, we've gone through lots of ups and downs. Like Tristan and I have the same personality in the sense that we're both very, we both go, we both, we both uh, like shoot before we aim. Right. And so sometimes we'll do something and not communicate it. And then the other one will be like, whoa, dude, like, I didn't know you're going to do that. Right. Because we're both very like spontaneous. Um and so I think if there's anything, like if we want to get, get to, like in terms of how Tristan and I are with each other, if there's anything that like maybe has gotten us into disagreements or maybe butted heads on something, it's typically communication. It's typically like, and our communication is good for the most part, but sometimes, you know, I'll do something and I won't confer with him. He'll do something, he will confer with me. And so we'll butt heads on that. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have to also understand, okay, like at first you might get a little defensive because you meant well, and then you take a step back and you're like, you know what? Okay. I can understand how like that wouldn't have been, that wasn't the best way to do it. Right. Like Tristan moves at the speed of light. Right. I don't. So sometimes he feels like he's waiting for me and that I know his personality and that's hard for him. So you know, those are things that we've learned about each other and we, we, we make the best of that, you know? It all, goes, it all goes back to trust, right? Like I trust Nick, right? Anytime, 
if I hear somebody say anything about Nick, I'm like, mm, I don't think so. Right. And that's where I come in and I, I defend him. Right. Yeah. Or, the, so, or he goes, you're totally right. Nick's totally or right. I could be like, mm, yeah, you know what? Yes. But let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. How I know him too. Tristan yeah. Tristan and Anthony got me were like, I can sometimes come off as, um, uh, I call it, I call it really passionate. Right. Well, that's the thing. Like I can come off not aggressive. What did you say earlier when I texted you about? Oh, no, no, I did say aggressive. I said, some people will view you as very aggressive. And I have to explain to it that he's really passionate and he's really involved in the moment. So, you know, it's really my interpretation of knowing him for such a long time. I have to explain it to people. I'm like, look, you can call it aggression, but it's really passionate. Let's use that towards our advantage. Right. Or even vulnerability, like that is something that I've seen you guys bring, like your leadership is very vulnerable, like you allow people to see the challenges that you're going through and you're honest. And I think sometimes people can see that, you know, in the same way, instead of looking at it as vulnerability. I think that it's important for a leader to be transparent. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that we have also, for some reason or another, leaders feel not all leaders some leaders feel that showing transparency or vulnerability is a sign of weakness when i actually feel like it's a sign of strength because it's very hard to admit that when you've done something wrong or it's hard to admit when you are are struggling right you don't always have to have all the answers and i think we need a lot of that now in the sense of like you know <clears throat> if i'm having a struggle with something if i'm i'll give you an example right so like when i became regional technology director for my region <clears throat> i made the decision to to um, dissolve my teams mm-hmm. and, I, and I was transparent. I was like, listen, like I'm going to eventually go back into this. I don't, I'm spreading myself too thin. I'm not, I'm not giving the attention to my agents that they need. And I have to focus on this new position. And then when I get my, my footing there and my schedule down, then I'll come circle back around and form another team when I know I can pay attention to that. And people were like, you know, that's a super cool thing for you to say because so many agents feel like, you know, they got to get bigger, 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 but you have to get better and focus for you can get bigger. And so I felt like I wasn't focused and I wasn't giving my attention to my agents that they needed and I was doing them a disservice. And so that was a realization that I came to and it was really hard to admit that I needed to do that. Um, but you have to talk about when you fail and when you screw up and things that you're going through, because when you, when people feel like you're up here and you say, listen, I go through these types of struggles, they're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, knowing that you go through that, it, 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 it's, it helps, it helps, you know, it helps them, you know, it helps them realize that like everybody goes through stuff. Like we look like we're always happy and, you know, excited and, but no, we're not like things frustrate us and things don't work. And you have to talk about that stuff. So. Yeah. That's probably, so we were talking about before the show, is there anything you don't want to talk about? And you guys said, no, we'll talk about anything you want. So that we were talking about at a point where you guys kind of had a, a big, I don't know what the word is, crisis, public um, PR challenge the PR, crisis. PR crisis there you go yeah and and you and at that time your group could have fallen apart and actually the well, not just our group our careers our lives well, your whole lives yeah I mean it was a big it was a big deal and I don't want to get into the details of that but I'll it, let Nick take it first because my dog I have to just help my dog really quick okay. your dog <laughs> which one He's, he's failing. He's like, I'm out of this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a that was a watershed moment. What? That was a watershed moment for you guys, I think. Yeah. And so, what ended up happening is your group grew by yeah. leaps and bounds. So tell me what you yeah. learned about yourself yeah. during that time. Yeah, I think I have to preface a little bit because you know about what it was. Like, you know, Tristan and I were accused of something very terrible. We were accused of of uh domestic violence and um if anybody knows us and if everybody know anybody knows our family, anybody knows our wives and our kids, that's clearly not true. Um, and if anybody knows my wife Ann Baldwin, um, if anything, I'm afraid of her. <laughs> you know, she's a hundred pounds soaking wet and and not one to mess with if you bump into her in a dark alley. So that was the accusation and it spread all over the internet like wildfire. And um we don't have to get into the whole the whole thing, but you know 
it was a situation that really could have ruined our lives um, and it could have ruined the group. And we were at the time about 35,000 members and that was big for the time, Yeah, right? Was. And everybody was like, death of lab coats. This is the death of lab coats. I know that, you know, people were calling for us to be fired and this, that, and the other. And, you know, over time, it uh, actually, it, as, as, as a way to bring us down, actually, it had the adverse effect. It grew us, right? Like people who didn't know who we were, people who weren't in the group were like, who are these lab coat agents? Like <laughs> I joined this group. And it was just like this mass exodus into the group to see what this was about. And it would, took a long time. And by the way, this was two weeks before our conference, our first big conference in Miami, which had about 300 people uh, uh, bought tickets. We had, we had um, vendors and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, every single, two weeks later of the conference, every single person who bought a ticket showed up. Only two speakers dropped out and one sponsor, and it was huge. And everyone there was supportive, and it went all over social media. So doing that and having the support was big for us because people who knew us knew it was a bunch of BS. And so it was, I think, a reality check for us in the sense that um, we're in the public eye, and someone who didn't like us felt the need to say this, and it had an adverse reaction and only made us stronger. And I firmly believe that it made us stronger as an organization, but as, as humans and people. Um, it definitely helped my emotional intelligence. It made me not care so much about what people say about me in a negative way, because I feel that's the worst possible thing that could have ever happened. And you know, as well as I do, if those things were true, Tristan wouldn't be a market center owner. I wouldn't be uh, in leadership for my region, right? Like our group wouldn't be as big as it is. We wouldn't have the voices that we have uh, because we proved ourselves uh, and grew from that experience. And now people come up to us, they're like, I can't believe that. Like getting to know you guys, like what a, what a bunch of crap. But it made us really like stronger as as friends and as business partners and just as an organization and as people just a father you know a husband all that stuff all around you know so in terms of leadership <laughs> lessons as partners what's that what did you learn about leadership and partnership and communication the two of you navigating that crisis because you were each navigating it in your personal lives with mm -hmm. your wives, with whatever, but you also had to navigate it as partners in a business. What did that look like? Yeah, I think the first thing that comes to mind is really realizing that, that we were intertwined in this. I didn't really realize it until then that well, I'm like, oh crap, we're in this together, like in this together. And so that was completely apparent because both our families were being attacked. Our whole families, by the way, were being attacked. And so once we realized that in United, um, we started approaching it as a united front. And we're like, hey, this is how we're going to approach it. This is what we're going to do. But I can tell you day one and two were a disaster. And the, <laughs> yes. the, one thing, the one thing that I did really well on that is respond quickly. I cut out all of the diseases, right? Everybody who was negative like that. And I just went all in, did a message. And I mean, now we have a PR, well, we know what to do now, right? right. Yeah. Uh, but the quick response to what was happening and we stuck to our guns, which is look, we didn't do anything wrong. And I don't care what you tell me, I'm not gonna apologize for something I didn't do. And number two, oh, yeah. number two is you can fire me if you want. And I got fired from Keller Williams. Well, we both fired. got, so you did. Tristan got fired and I got, I got uh, not fired, but uh, my market center kind of removed me from the roster while this was going through uh, where we're going through this. Um, but it's interesting. Um, people who we considered really close friends instantly wanted nothing to do with us instantly. And it made us realize even more who we want to be in business with. Who True. is 
with us because they want to be seen and who is with us because they respect us and want to be in our tribe. People and, uh, and companies, by the way, because Facebook, Facebook was one of the ones who called us and you know, I had a conversation with them and I'm like, hey guys, look, have you heard of fake news? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, good, this is that. And they're like, okay, we trust you guys, right? Companies like Fidelity, National Title and, and other companies are like, we're on board with you. But there were a few who didn't stick by us. And you know what? It hurt us at the time, but that's part of growth, right? That was part we've of actually growth. accepted some of those people back who have come to us and they've said, you know, we're really sorry. And we're like, that's all good, man. No, we don't hold grudges. Also, um, you know, what, what, uh, what is, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things where, you know, it was a huge, it was a huge growth moment and a lot of, a lot of things, you know, came to, a lot of things went through my mind in terms of, you know, are we going to get through this, you know, and, and we just have to keep, oh, what I was going to say was, yes, like Tristan said, we had people saying, you guys got to apologize. We're like, what am I apologizing for? I'm not, well, because you're a man and this is what you are accused of. I'm like, but that's not, that's, I'm not going to just apologize because I'm a guy and because I was accused of domestic violence, that doesn't make any sense. And so I'm not going to apologize because I didn't say the things that I was quoted as saying. And thank God we didn't apologize because I am so certain that if we did, we wouldn't be on this interview right now with you. That's true. Well, and did you guys feel like you had to start filtering? Like, were, were you watching yourself more when you were out in public? And yeah, it's, natural. <laughs> it's natural to do that right after. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you know what? Well, conversations are being had around us, right? So yeah. I'll let you take it. My dog's barking. Like the other day, somebody in a Facebook group tried to call me out. Like I, I um, was being very vocal about equal rights and, 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 you know, so on and so forth with what's going on. And someone goes, oh, Nick Baldwin's the last person to talk, to lecture about anything having to do with whatever. And I go, oh, you mean about that time, blah, 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 blah. I go, just so you know, dude, like I talk about it all the time. If you're trying to call me out, you just fail. Um, because I get in front of it. We've been in front of it so many times, you know, and, and it's like, dude, just don't it, it's 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 so, so let's pivot into that conversation because i'm curious you mentioned about somebody bringing up something in your group yeah you're now leading a group of 121,000 whatever members which is kudos to you guys by the way that's really mm -hmm. phenomenal but what leadership lessons have you learned in shepherding so many people yeah mm -hmm. i've learned that there's a lot of different personalities out there. Uh, <laughs> I've also learned from that experience we were just talking about that you always have to look at the other side of the story, right? Yeah. Like, and I'm very skeptical about when someone tells me something, oh, did you hear so-and-so did so-and-so? I'm like, you know, I got to look into this because I'm not just going to take it at face value because that happened to me and I won't let that happen I'm not going to do the same to others. So in that sense, the leadership for me was as a team and then becoming a team leader, right? Like always hearing my agents out, like always talking to them about how they're feeling and let them, letting them talk um, and understanding that everybody needs to be approached in a different way um, when there's so many different personalities uh, to take into account and always uh, just have empathy for, for everything. Uh, because you don't have to understand what someone's going through. You just have to listen and understand that it's, and that nobody's problems are greater than the next person's because we all process things differently. You know, that's kind of my lesson. Yeah. So here's on, on top of that, I could think of three things just off the top of my head. Number one was now when people are attacking us or attempt to attack us in any way, it, it really falls short of how we feel because I really don't care anymore. And right. so, I mean, we got dragged through so much before that now, I mean, people can say whatever they want and yeah. uh, it doesn't even, it doesn't even do anything to us. So yeah. because we suffered so much during that time. Um, yeah. And so that was really hard for us. So that made us stronger. Number one, uh, we really don't care about opinions. 
um, we understand that what we're doing is we're doing it because we're passionate about it. And we know that it's the good thing to do, right? So that's part two to this. We're so passionate about what we do that we continue to stay the course, even though it got incredibly hard. And so when I talk to other leaders, I say, look, before you get into whatever you're going to get into, make sure that you're really passionate about this, because if you're not, the moment it gets hard, that's when your butt leaves the door. That's right. And so the third part about us was we continue to live our lives leading with kindness. Like regardless of how you come at us, we're going to come back to you and just be as kind as possible. Kindness doesn't mean you're weak, right? If somebody is being rude to us or unkind or racist in any way, uh, we kick them out, right? I'm not going to take it either. Kindness just means your approach is more of understanding and approaching it to be more all-inclusive, to be more united, right? That's what it's about. Love that. So you guys must have had massive growth just personally too throughout those years, um, because I know I know how hard it is to truly not care what other people are saying. I mean, that's. You know, here's the thing. I think like we were talking about before we went live, like um, you know, the, I watched a video. Uh, from Gary Vaynerchuk and how he deals with his haters and how he has empathy for his haters, right? And he's like, if somebody watches 49 second, seconds of a video of me uh, and they don't know who I am, he goes, I don't expect them to go do seven hours of research on who I am before they comment. They're just going to comment because all they see is that 49 seconds. He's like, now, you know, he says to the guy interviewing, he goes, if you were to say something negative about me, he goes, you and I have a relationship that would hurt me, Right. But the people online who don't know you are just judging you based on that little clip. And so you have to have empathy for them because they're the ones who are miserable enough to just automatically say something negative to somebody they've never even met or know nothing about. And so I actually look at it that way too. Like I feel bad for people that feel the need to talk to me in that way. I really do. Um, and the ones that I care, when I care, it's when, it's when I know them very well and they know me because to me, it's more of like constructive criticism or I need to change the way I'm doing something or approaching something. But if someone doesn't know me and they feel the need to comment negatively, I'm like, that's on them, 100%, you know? Yeah, 100% agree. So you guys have used the word passion about 100 times. Yeah. And what I'm wondering is what's the why behind your passion? Where does that passion come from? What is the passion for? Where are you going? There's a lot, there's a lot behind it. And the first thing that comes to mind when I think of lab code agents is what's happened is we've used this as a vehicle to initially we thought we were helping out as many people as possible in their business and in their growth all together in life. But what happened is, is it actually transformed us. And so along the way, uh, we've changed part of that passion to really to really go deeper into growing ourselves as individuals and as business people and as leaders. And in transition, it's really affected those around us in a positive way. So the deeper we go with ourselves, right? The deeper other people can go in that journey with us. And that, that's really what, what it's about with Lab Code Agents. Yeah. Why is that important to you, Tristan? Oh, because I feel like so much of what's out there for people to be able to, to go to and understand how to run a business is behind a wall, right? And not all of us grew up with the same opportunities as others, right? I certainly didn't. And so for me to be able to play catch up, um, that was a big deal because I started, I started late. I came from a different background financially than most people. And so for me, it was always about well, how can I even the playing field to all those other people that want to do just as good as me or Nick and make it easy for them? And so just giving everybody an equal playing field so that they too can take advantage of what's out there. They just didn't know about it. Yeah. And for me, it's like, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. Like, I just really enjoy seeing someone say, Hey, you know, I um, implemented this, 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 follow-up script or I did this Facebook ad and you know here's the results and you know I learned it from Nick and 
you know, I just think that's so, I just think that's so cool when somebody says, you know, this Facebook ad that I, that I saw Nick talk about, you know, got me a million dollar buyer or because of, I, I implemented these systems that Nick and Tristan talked about, you know, I added another hundred thousand dollars to my income this year. Like that just makes you feel really good. Yeah. Right. Um, and I've just always been the type of person to want to help other people get better because like, I, I, uh, you know, I grew up with a mom and dad that obviously, you know, they, we weren't poor, right? But, but I didn't really figure out what I wanted to do until I was almost thirty, and I'm forty-one now. I was twenty-seven when I got my real estate license, and I was on the ten-year plan at college, and I was bartending. And I met my wife when she walked into the bar, and she basically was way out of my league and said, if you want a future with me, then you need to get your, you know, what together. And so I did, I got my real estate license, didn't really want to, but I was like living off of my parents until I was probably 30 years old. And then I started to take a lot of my, then I just really started to think long and hard about what I needed to do. And I think for me, I've never been about, you know, having an enormous house or having a million dollars. That's not what I've been about. I've been about being able to have my own career, go get to where I want to get to, you know, and just be, just have a, a family and an awesome wife and awesome kids. Um, everything else is just bonus. So I want people, I don't want people to have to depend on others to get to where they need to be in financially. And so giving them advice and strategy makes me feel good when it works for them because it can change, essentially change your life, you know? Love that. I have another question for you, Lindsay, and let, Lindsay, unless you want to go. Go. Okay. So I would be remiss not to ask this because the leader equation, normally who we have on is the entrepreneurs and their shotgun leader, their director of ops, their director of sales, whatever, the um, visionary integrator relationship. Is your relationship a visionary integrator relationship or do you, are you both the visionaries and you each have integrators? And if so, should we be getting them on the show? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. So actually we struggled with that for the first uh, four years because we're both very visionary oriented and over the last, and my wife's a total visionary too. So I was always lacking the analytical side. So over the last two years, we've put better people in place in our organization to be more uh, ops oriented, right? Analytical type thing. Yeah. And I've worked a lot on myself to grow that part of, of how I function as a leader as well. So um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely been a challenge for us a hundred percent, but we're adapting and we're growing. So I know, look, you look at Nick now, the ability for him to be more uh, organized and analytical has gone from like zero to a hundred miles an hour over the last year and a half. And I always commend him for that because ever since that team leader role, then got him to that next position, it just changed the way he started thinking and organizing things. So um, yeah, we've both, we've both like, grown a lot. We're both. Yeah. Like, that like, you know, it's like when you're hiring for some, for a role in your team and you're like, oh, I'm going to hire that guy. I really liked him. Right. But if you hire people, just, oh, I like that guy. He's just like me. Right. Right. You're just going to hire someone who's just like you and they're still not going to be able to do anything that you can't do. So that's Tristan and I, like we come up with a lot of the ideas and we've always had challenges implementing. So luckily, we, like you said, we have a strong team on the back end now that's really uh, helping us implement. And, Very uh, strong team. Yeah. How many are on the team? Is that a uh, local, we've got three locally, and then we've got four virtual assistants as well. Uh, those are those are people that are on the payroll. And then outside of that, we have we have moderators and admins who help run lab code agents, yep. and that's a total of. 36 so they're always contributing and giving for free right mm -hmm. and then off of our side project which is the the membership type thing that we're bringing up 
there's a, two other partners involved on that and they're, they're going to be part of that organization as well, along with like a whole bunch of other people. But look, it takes amazing people that help you uh, put things into play. That's the key. You look at Steve Jobs and, and Steve Wozniak, right? Uh, Warren Buffett and tell me the guy's name, the other dude. Anybody know his, his, his uh, business partner? No. Oh, geez. Yeah, right. The guy with the thing at the other place? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nick. That's the one. That's that's exactly the one. Wizard behind the screen. There's always a wizard behind the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so really quickly, when you guys were first doing like your events and everything, that was the two of you. Doing no, we had a we have event yeah. planner. We, we, had a, yeah, we had an event planner. We have an event planner. And right now, honestly, like our event planners are our wives. Are, yeah. Our wives um planned our last LCA uh, live event and they did an amazing job. And we partnered with a guy named Jeff Fitzer, who um, is, um, he's, he, run, he, he runs a, a, a region for USA Mortgage. And Jeff, when we partnered with Jeff, he really helped us because he runs our podcast. So he keeps that consistent. Um, and he also um, helps organize our one day events. So, so he's an implementer, right? Yeah. Yep, he's also an idea guy too and he's very creative um but when you partner with people um you know that like that kept us on track uh, like my wife comes from uh she went to fashion the fashion institute you know she um has a great eye for design um and tristan's wife uh you know she's a uh, works for a nonprofit, so she you know she's also analytical but also an idea person it's very rare that you get those those that combination so they crushed our last event people were like who planned this or like our wives and they're like what and then they started getting calls from other companies wanting them to plan their events awesome. yeah so true what's true. the biggest lesson that you had to learn about how to succeed through others because you kind of started sort of pretty grassroots and then developed into something pretty big <laughs> Yeah. It's one lesson that we're still learning. And yeah. that's, that's this, um, that the way that I see things isn't the only right way. And, you know, believe it or not, sometimes you get Hold just on, caught can you up. Can you say that again? <laughs> I like that to that on. I want to make sure we, we got, got it. Tape. <laughs> it's recorded. It's recorded. Damn. Just hit rewind. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's one thing that, oh my God, my wife loves Tristan to death, but she's like, you know what? Just because Tristan says it doesn't like she, my wife is the only one that can call Tristan and, and your wife, my wife and Tristan's wife, you can listen to anybody else. That's so true. That's uh, very true. Anyway, we're talking, when they talk, I'm like, okay, okay, what let's, let's reanalyze this. Let's take a look at, that's very true. And then that's a big challenge for me only because I'm such a, a passionate driver. Right. Um, so that, that's one thing that I've adjusted. I think I'm a little better at it. Yeah. I think it's a really important thing. I think great leaders need people around them who will challenge them, who will ask great questions, who will push to make sure that the direction we're going is the right direction. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I love that. That's a great point. You know, I think like, <clears throat> because Tristan moves so fast, um, you know, he, he, he sometimes will make decisions. Um, and I actually think, you know, you've been, you've got, you've become very good about acknowledging, you know, okay, maybe I shouldn't have made that decision without consulting other people. When at first he would have gotten like really defensive about it. But then I think like, I've also learned to, um, what do you think I've learned the most of Tristan? Uh, I think if I, if I look at Nick, I think over, the growth that has happened with Nick has been over the last two years when he took that team leader position because I started seeing him grow as a leader more. And meaning uh, now he, he really started to understand the dynamics of what it takes to, to lead an organization, right? And then also the other part was he started to live by his schedule, right? And that really opened up so much more because it's set time for certain things. And that has been super key. I don't think, I don't know if he sees that, but how I see it is like Nick's gone from, from here to being like an amazing leader. 
and that that's awesome. Thank you very much. I think at first it was hard because, um, you know, I I started this new position in a new in a new town, and like I didn't mean to, but like I had to sort of like LCA. Like I didn't put LCA. LCA wasn't second, but I think because I was starting a new a new uh, er, aspect of my career, I had to really like lean in and learn, and I think because of that. We, we slowed down a little bit and I know Tristan got frustrated. But well, we then- found a good balance. I think, look what happened because of that, right? Yeah. Nick, Nick created the command group, right? So he, you can see he's a lot more visible in that one, right? Because that's, he plays a role in the region. He's a strong leader there. And then I play a slightly larger role in lab coats as a whole, but together it's like, we're, we're a superpower, right? So it's a good balance. I'm not saying I never post a command. He never posts the lab codes, right? right? It's it's just so cool and, and unique right now because we're both, both going with our strengths. So one of the questions that came up in the um, live stream was, um, what is your relationship with the developer teams at KW and are they actively looking to you for feedback and information? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm the regional tech director for my region. So there's a lot of feedback going on there. Um, you know, the, the, we do a lot of labs, we test a lot of the features before the agents get them. <clears throat> um, like for instance, being rolled out very soon, if you're a, if you're a KW agent, you'll be excited that you're not going to need MailChimp anymore to send out email campaigns because you'll be able to do it through command email. And I have that feature and it works incredibly well. Um, so that's going to be fun. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of cool things we get to test and give feedback, say, say we don't like something, we get to suggest cool features. Like one of the suggestions was, you know, um, the ability to, for, 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 um, for a client to request a video, a live video tour of a property. You know, that was something that we came up with and uh, we pitched it to Jason Abrams and they ran with it and within 90 days, within 60 days, less, 30 days, it was like now in our app uh, so your clients can do that. So like, it's very cool. Um, and there are a lot of things that people have to understand if you're a KW agent, command is being built on such a huge scale. It's being built for 180,000 agents, right? <clears throat> it's not being built for 10,000 or 20,000, right? The largest CRM next to command has 30,000 users, right? But when you look at 30,000 users, obviously that's a lot, but compared to 180, it's a whole different scale. Right. So they're building things differently because they have to build it for more people. So it takes a little bit longer and there might be a little bit of kinks that need to be worked out once it's released. But if you look at command from when it was rolled out in February, 2019 to now, I mean, it's like a completely different system. Um, so I, I love that I'm able to have conversations with huge agents like, Greg Erlanger of Easy Sales Team, like they're, they're, they, they, in the month, in the first week of June, they listed 48 homes in the first week. Right. And I got him for a webinar, by the way. I don't know if you saw the email, but they're, they're a huge team. They're like top 10 in the company and number one in my region. So those are the people that I get to be in conversation with. And that's so fun because then we get to, take what they need for command, which is much different than what a $2 million or $3 million producer needs, right? But at the same time, those teams are more eager to help you because they come from a solution-based place. Right. And so they, they're, they, they, and, and, and so it's a lot, it's, it's a really like, it's really, really cool to talk to people like that when it comes to masterminding around tech. That's awesome. So, Long-winded answer. Sorry, Tristan also has a regional position. Why are you hiding it from everybody? I know. I'm at a regional position. <laughs> That's, really good. That's awesome. Really good. That's really good. What's the best thing that you guys have done together? Let's wind up with that. Sleepovers. Sleepovers are good. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you what. There's two things that come to mind really quick. Yeah. That's when we're on stage, we're fired together. It's so good. It's like we're brothers. And the other thing, and then the other thing that I miss is when we mastermind in person, when we mastermind in person, 
once once we get all of the stuff out like ooh, what's your favorite game what'd you eat all that crap and then we get into it then it gets really good that's awesome yeah. well we're actually... well i'm sorry go ahead Lindsay. no you go nick no i was gonna say like uh it's funny because like when we go up on stage it looks like uh you know we have obviously very good chemistry right but um i think that that's part of why uh lab coats has been successful because i think like we we like to teach uh but have fun right doing it and so if we can make people laugh and teach them how to grow their business like then we've done our job so you know so how can our listeners find you get in touch with you all of that stuff mm. send you referrals go to your events yep. i think if you just go to labcodeagents.com the, our web our main website you can find both of us there and obviously go to facebook yeah you just you facebook to facebook, there. type in our names Easy you can go to lab code agents if you're a kw agent you can go to command your conversion uh which is uh, the kw command group we have and you can email me at nick baldwin at kw.com if you want to reach out awesome you guys thank you so much because he doesn't check his email don't check my email <laughs> you can text me and my text is on google so just google it I love it. Well, we're so thankful. There were so many things that we could have, we, I probably could have talked to you guys for like another hour. So thank you so much for, you know, talking through leadership and talking through your partnership and just being really raw and honest with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. You know, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank have you. a great day. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.